In this video, I'm going to show how to solve the linear program in Excel. I've already gone through it step by step in the PowerPoint lecture, but in this live demonstration, you'll be able to see me make it in Excel. The problem I'm going to solve is the linear program that you see here. I've just copied a picture from the uh, PowerPoint slide. So we're maximizing two variables subject to two constraints and then two non-negativity constraints. And I'm going to try to do everything exactly in the same cells as in the PowerPoint lecture, but my apologies if something gets off slightly. All right, I'm going to have one column to keep track of the DVD and its uh, requirements. And here is a column for the MP3 players. And then here's a column where I'll keep track of the, the total or the actual. Um, I'm going to use this first row to keep track of the profits. Again, trying to make things look more or less like the layout of the handwritten the mathematical notation. And we get $7 for each DVD player, and we get $5 for each MP3 player. And then below it, I'm going to keep, tra keep track of the number of DVD players or MP3 players that we are thinking about making uh, as the current candidate solution. And for now, I'm just putting one in for each cell, for each quantity, so that I can do the math in my head as I'm creating these later formulas. And with one unit each, I can do the math in my head easily. Uh, so these two cells are where the number of each unit will, will live. And I want that to stand out so I can see it out easily. So I decided to color code it in some way. Then I am adding my column here for the, the row for the electronics, and then a row for the assembly constraint. And um, each DVD player takes four hours of electronics time and two hours of assembly time. We always go back here to our original linear program and look. So I'm just I'm putting these coefficients in those cells. Um, each MP3 player is three hours of electronics time and one hour of assembly time. And then I want this cell to have the total amount of electronics time that I would end up using if I was making one DVD player and one MP3 player. And the way you might originally think about doing that would be to say, let's take this cell times this cell plus this cell times that cell, and that is that is exactly the calculation that we want to do. But if I hit F2 to look at the formula, because you always want to make sure that you got your formulas entered correctly, um, it's not too tough to figure this out. I have the blue times the reddish plus the purple times the green. When there are only four numbers, it's not that bad to do. Um, but if you had any more than that, it would be easy to make a mistake somewhere along the way. So an easier way to do it is the formula sum product. And you can see it says sum product, and then the little tip there is showing the different, use one or two or three arrays. So what I'm going to do is take these variables, and then a comma, and then the uh, coefficients on the constraints, and then type a right parenthesis, and we'll see if this did what we wanted. Well, hitting F2, this is just easier to de debug the formula. It's taking the two things in the blue boxes, multiplying them one by one times the thing in the, the red box, uh, and then adding them up. And 1 times 4 plus 1 times 3 is obviously 7. So that's is working the way we wanted it to. And then if I go in here and um, put dollar signs in front of row 3, that locks the formula on row 3. So now if I use control C and then control V to copy that down, and then I hit F2, you can see ah, this is working the way I wanted it to. It's figuring out the total amount of assembly time that I would use from having one unit of each. And then I can use this formula again up here for the profits. Uh, you can see it's that's working just nicely. Um, and then I decide I wanted to color code that. And then let's make it look like money, but I don't need the decimal places. So there we've got 
it's set up pretty close to what we need here. Um, for a certain number of DVD players and MP3 players, um, we can figure out how much profit we would make and how much electronics time we would use and how much assembly time we would use. But in order to solve it as a linear program, we need to put in the information about how much we have available on the two constraints. So the amount of electronics we use, which is right now at 70, has to be less than or equal to 240. And the amount of assembly time has to be less than or equal to 100. So now we've got all the information uh, in here. And it's never a bad idea to save your work. Okay, so what we've got now is a, a what-if tool that lets us, like I said, try different combinations and see, oh, how much would that use of our two constraints and how much money would we make? Uh, and we could just goof around and look for an answer, but that's not really the point, is it? The point is for Excel to solve it for us. So here I'm going to go now to the Data tab, and I'm going to go over here and click on Solver. If you click on data on your computer and you don't see Solver, uh, there are instructions in the PowerPoint about how to get Solver to appear, but I won't do that in this video. And you only have to do it once on your computer. So I click here for Solver, and then I get this dialog box. And on the top here, I have to say where the <coughs> cell is that we are trying to optimize. In this case, we are trying to maximize cell D2. And we are maximizing. The other option, obviously, here is minimizing. And then the cells that solvers should play around with in order to maximize our profits, those cells are the blue ones here. The number of DVD players and number of MP3 players. And then for the constraints, we can say just add the constraints. And we can add multiple constraints at once. So these two numbers have to be less than. And then if you need greater than, that's also available from the drop-down menu. And then the quantities, it should be less than, and click OK. Um, so right here, you see this box, make unconstrained variables non-negative. That is how we ensure that negative values don't occur. That is how we uh, enforce the non-negativity constraints. You may have noticed, I didn't put them into the spreadsheet I made, because clicking that button there accomplishes exactly that same thing for us. So then, as far as solving it, it's important you click simplex, because otherwise you won't get the right solution method, and you won't get the right report in the end. So we click solve, and it thinks, and it says, I found a solution. All constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied, which is great. And then we have three reports we could look at if we want to, so highlight the ones you want to see, and then click OK, and those reports would generate it. So now you see across the bottom here, we have an answer report, sensitivity report, and a limits report. So let's look at them one at a time. The We'll start with the answer report. The answer report tells you what time you ran it and, oh, did it find the optimal solution. Um, it took 0 0.015 seconds, so one and a half hundredths of a second. So yeah, that was pretty fast. Um, and um, so here we've got information about the objective, and here we have information about the variables, and here we have information about the constraint. So in our original answer, and our original answer was five DVDs and five MP3s, and with that answer we would have made $60. With the optimal answer of 30 and 40, we make $410. Um, in the end, for the electronics constraint, we are using 240 units of that constraint. Um, and that means the constraint is binding, and there is no slack. There is no unused capacity. And looking at the assembly constraint, the same thing is true. We're using 100 units of that capacity, so that constraint is binding. It's been totally used up, and there is no slack. So the answer report told us everything that we thought we wanted to know. Um, how many, how much money to make, um, how many units to make of each thing, and how much of each constraint we would use, and if each, any constraint was going to have a little bit of unused capacity. All right, so 
I mean, you look quickly at the limits report because really there's just no need for the limits report. So let's get this out of the way quickly because it shows us things that we already knew. It tells us, oh, optimally you could make $410. Optimally you should make 30 DVDs and 40 MP3s. Okay, we already knew that. And then it's telling us, you know, if you don't make any DVDs, but you still make 40 MP3s, you'll make $200. And if you um, make no MP3s, I'm sorry, make 30 DVDs and no MP3s, you'll make $210. I don't know why this is interesting information. And then again, just to recap, if you make 30 and 40, you'll make $410. So the limits report is not something that we have any real use for. So let's look lastly here at the sensitivity report, which honestly has some stuff that you didn't know you might like to know. Um, it's got two big blocks of cells information here. Information about the variables, the number of DVDs and MP3s, and then information about the constraint. Um, so we know 30 DVDs and 40 MP3s. We already knew that, so you're thinking, what's new? Just hang on. Um, with the DVD player, um, the objective coefficient is $7 a piece. Now suppose your boss says, hey, I know you made this spreadsheet and everything, and that was cool, but um, actually you're going to have to do it all over again because we don't make $7 for DVD, we make 8 You think, oh no. Actually, just from looking at this, I know that I don't have to resolve the linear program. I know that this optimal decision of 30 and 40 is still optimal. How do I know that? Because this quantity is optimal um, if the price is $7 or if that $7 increases by as much as $3. So if it was 7 and then went to 9 or even 10, this stays optimal. Now, if this decreases by 33 and a third cents, then this is not optimal anymore, and then I don't know what the answer is. But if it decreases by, say, 10 or 20 cents, um, that would that would be within the allowable decrease, and this quantity would stay optimal. Similar thing on the MP3 players. Right now it's at $5. If that increased to like $5.50, that would be an increase of 0.5, which is more than 0.25. And if it increased that much, this isn't optimal anymore. Similarly, if it decreased by more than a dollar and a half, so if, say MP3 players only got us three dollars, that would be a decrease of two dollars, which is obviously more than than a decrease of one and a half. At that point, this wouldn't be optimal anymore. So on the sensitivity report, we know how sensitive this optimal decision is to changes in these profits per unit which could come in handy. I do need to point out that these increases and decreases are only um, correct if we're talking about changing this one thing at a time. If we changed them both, then all bets are off and we'll just have to go and solve the linear program over again to see what the answer came out to be. So lastly here on the constraints, um, we're using this much time on each of these two processes and this is how much we had available, and so we're, we're using it all up. Um, but here's what the shadow price tells us. It tells us how much profits would go up if we had more of this. So if we had one more hour of electronics time, profits would go up by a dollar and a half. So really what that means is the shadow price tells us the most we would be willing to spend for one more unit of that constraint. So if we had another dollar... Sorry, if we had another hour of electronics time, profits would go up by a dollar and a half. So the shadow price is the most we would be willing to spend for one more unit of that constraint. Now that that increased profit um, is only good for so much, for, for so far. So this 240, if we increase it by less than 60 units, um, for every hour we add, profits go up by this much. So if we had 60 more hours, profits would go up by $90. Uh, it also works the other way. If you take away time, profits go down by that much. Um, if you decrease it by less than 40 units, every hour you take away, profits go down by that amount. Um, so that's another thing that you didn't know you might like to know. But so now if somebody says, hey, I'd be willing to work in the electronics shop, and <laughs> you could pay me a dollar an hour. I know that's not realistic. 
um, for every hour they worked, you would get profits of a dollar and a half. And so if you paid them a dollar, you're obviously coming out ahead. And that um, trade-off is good um, for an increase of up to 60. And then if somebody's sick and they can't work for every hour of labor time you lose, profits go down by a dollar and a half. So that is how we create the reports, or how we understand the reports, and how we create the linear program in Excel.